Welcome to my tutorial on TensorFlow. <coughs> so before I start, I would like to go through some basic things about TensorFlow object detection model. The object detection model using the TensorFlow object detection API is developed by the Google Brain team. This TensorFlow object detection API allows people with barely any machine learning background to train a model to perform object detection. TensorFlow Object API comes with a pre-trained model known as Model Zoo. The model can recognize and differentiate up to 80 different unique objects. The things that the model can detect is sometimes also known as classes. You can download this model to look at the device things that the model can actually detect. Some models, some classes that the model can detect are person, bicycle, car, motorcycle, airplane, bus, and train. The thing with TensorFlow object, object Detection API is that you can use the existing file in the model to create your own classes. This means that you can customize your model such that it can detect the things that you want it to detect. Before I go through the steps to customize your model so that it can detect your label, I would like to take this opportunity to teach you the basics of TensorFlow Object Detection API. When the, uh, when the TensorFlow API detects the classes in the video pictures or webcam, it will create this uh, bounding boxes which will bound the object and it will come with a label. So the scores actually represents the probability that a classes was detected and it will be between, the value will be between zero and one. And the higher the number, the more confident is the model. And this score is also sometimes known, known as the confidence score. And we have something also known as the classes. So classes are the things that you actually want to detect using the object detection model. So classes are the things that you want your TensorFlow object detection AP model API to detect. There are a few models you can actually choose from. The faster is your model, the less accurate it will be. Generally speaking, SSD model net is faster, but it is less accurate. On the other hand, faster RCNN is slower, but it is much more accurate. MAP stands for Mean Average Precision, which indicates how well the model performs on the COCO dataset. So, COCO dataset refers to the large scale object detection, segmentation, and caption dataset. Let me show you some of the COCO dataset. So let's choose person and search for person. So as you can see, most of the images in the COCO data set are labeled and ready to be used for training. COCO data set is used in ac academics and industry as a benchmark for their model. If you are creating unique classes, you will need to create your own classes and annotate your own data set. So if you move around, you can see those that are bounded by this black outlines are those labeled data sets. So for example, a uh, person, you see, the, the, for the person is, is the one here highlighted. Then you have cars, um, traffic lights, and the fire hydrant, same as here. Person, baseball bat, and the baseball gloves. So yeah. So if you have more, if you have time, you can come down to Coco uh, dataset main website to try out on the rest of the data set. And you, maybe if you want, you can play around with it. So cat and uh, person and TV. Once you have prepared your data set, you will need to split your data set into training data and testing data set. 
Training set is needed to train your model, while the test set is needed to test the trained model. The, the important thing is that you should never uh, mix up both of them. If you train your model on test set, you will get a surprisingly positive outcome for your evaluation matrix. However, the model will do very poorly on unseen data. So, um, basically you will need to do some installation at least and you can follow this uh, tutorial guide from TensorFlow 2 Object Detection API tutorial. So you have to, there's a bunch of long, long tutorials. But uh, basically, once you download the necessary libraries, you will need to prepare your data set and notate your data set. And the annotation of data set can be used using this uh, label IMG. And then you will need to create your label map. So when you are trying to annotate your images, you will be using this uh, application called label IMG. And uh, you will be pointing to your training demo demo images folder. But basically what you will do is you will create a bounding box around the objects that you are trying to detect. In the label map, it will contain the items or the things or the classes that you are trying to detect. So for example, the example given in the tutorial is this item ID1 name is a cat and then item ID2 and then the name is a dog. So basically in this uh, object detection model, they are trying to capture, to identify these two different classes, one of which is, is cat and the other one is dog. Yeah. So normally what will happen once you annotate using the uh, label IMG is that you will come to this, uh, you will need to convert all this .xml file to the .record file. When you annotate your data set using the label IMG application, uh, you will generate the .xml file and you will need to convert your .xml file into a .record file and because the TensorFlow API will be using the .record file to read, to read your annotations. Therefore, you would have a test record as well as a training record. So lastly, we will need to make some changes to your config file. So some of the changes that you have to make to your .config file are shown in this tutorial. So basically, it, uh, it has all the lab highlighted, highlighted lines in the pipeline.config file. And these are the things that you have to make changes to this and this. And everything is actually included in the tutorial. So once you have uh, com changed your config file, you will need to change your model. And then you will just need to type in this line on of code into your command prompt. And you will start training your model. I will come up with the entire API tutorial. But for now, I'll be going through a brief uh, outline of what you can do to train your API model. But whatever I'm going to teach in maybe the next tutorial will be coming from this uh, TensorFlow 2 object detection API tutorial. I will be making some adjustment to it, but uh, this is the end of my introduction to the TensorFlow Object Detection API uh, tutorial. In my next tutorial, I will be teaching you the step-by-step -step methods to create a customized object detection program using Python. If you have any questions, feel free to leave your questions in the comment section below. If not, um, thank you for watching and see you next time.